What is going on everyone? Welcome back to part two of the worst towns for 2020 or 2020. However you say it is fine. I've actually got complaints for calling it 2020 and I've actually called 2020. Got complaints about that. Makes no sense. Why do you bother complaining about it? Moving on. This is a list of cities and towns that are going downhill and you should probably avoid moving to if you have other options. In the last handful of years, most of America has seen some good times. People have jobs, the economy is growing, crime is down across the board. The towns and cities on this list are sort of swimming against the current. These are towns that all that progress is sort of skipped over. The good times train doesn't make stops at these places. Like I said in the last video, there are 4,464 cities in the United States and only about 10% of them are appealing enough for most people to want to move there. Doesn't mean people aren't still moving to the crappy ones. They are, which is in some cases, really strange. This list is in no particular order, so please keep that in mind when leaving your well thought out comment, I'm sure. That being said, if you're looking for a new city or town to call home, you should probably stay away from... Number 10, Bogalusa, Louisiana. Bogalusa is a small city of 12,000 people near the Mississippi border. Of the more than 4,464 cities considered, there are very few that have a lower median home price than Bogalusa. Most of the homes in the city cost less than $70,000. For comparison, a typical home in the U.S. is worth about $229,000. So yeah, there's a big difference there. Very few residents here can even afford the $70,000 home. The median household income in Bogalusa is just about $24,000 a year. Taking out a mortgage in this city probably isn't even the best idea. I'd even be cautious about renting here, even though the rent's dirt cheap. Maybe if they had those villa rental things. At least that way, you know, they take a little money out of your rent every month and put it aside for you when you finally leave. At least you have enough to buy a bus ticket on your way out of town when you're fleeing. And no, villa's not paying me to say that. Bogalusa does have a country club. I've been to a few country clubs in my day, and this is the only one I've ever seen that has a dirt parking lot. Employment growth in the city over the past five years has exceeded 10% on a couple occasions. The poverty rate in Bogalusa is 36.3%. The overall crime rate in Bogalusa is 136% higher than the national average. Number nine, College Park, Georgia. College Park, with its population of 14,000 people, once was a nice city south of Atlanta. But like most cities that share the border with a major US airport, it's gone to crap. The poverty in College Park is 136% higher than the national average. Areas with high poverty tend to struggle with crime and surprise, surprise, crime is a major issue in College Park. The city's violent crime rate is nearly four times higher than the overall US violent crime rate. Crime, poverty, and all the other stats that go along with a place that sucks College Park is even more undesirable because of its proximity to Atlanta International Airport, which is the busiest airport in the world. Those who live near the airport are subjected to loud noise, excessive levels of pollution, traffic, and businessmen looking for massages. <laughs> Number eight, Pueblo, Colorado. Pueblo, Colorado is probably the worst Colorado city. Now they have some towns that should probably be bulldozed and started again that are far worse than Pueblo, but as far as cities go, this is rock bottom. The overall crime rate in Pueblo is 162% higher than the national average. You could actually be robbed while robbing someone in some of the neighborhoods of Pueblo, Colorado. With a population of about 110,000 people and a poverty rate that's 66% higher than the national average, Pueblo is not some place you should consider moving to. Maybe if you're bail bondsmen. Sure, they have plenty of work there for you. If you ever visit Pueblo, you'll think that I had some other place in mind when I made this video. The downtown area is really nice. It has a nice river walk, amazing architecture, and friendly people. But if you drive away from downtown into some of the residential areas, get out of your car, walk around, you'll say to yourself, ah, I see what Briggs was talking about. This place sucks. Hey, where's my car? I parked it right here. Oh my God, somebody stole my car. <laughs> Number seven, Nanakuli, Hawaii. Even though Nanakuli has a relatively high average household income of $65,000 a year, residents typically don't have as much purchasing power as the average American. If you adjust the cost of living in Nanakuli to the rest of America, their purchasing power is about $40,000. You know, if you were someplace else in the United States. This is because the cost of living in the city is 65% higher than the national average. You have spent a lot of money to live in paradise. If you're as pasty white as I am, a good portion that money goes to sunscreen and skincare. Twice as much if you find a nude beach. Thanks folks, I'll be here all week. A high cost of living is especially burdensome for people who are out of work. Nanakuli has an 8.3% five-year unemployment rate, more than double the national average. Number six. Arab, Alabama. So this little town is built around a typo, and I'm not kidding. The U.S. had an issue with growth and naming back in the 1800s. The U.S. was growing and people started naming towns after their favorite things, and one of the more popular ones was their favorite presidents. 
Example, how many Harrisvilles and Harrisburgs do we have? We have a lot. We had two presidents in the 1800s named Harrison. Well, sorta of two. One died a month after taking office. He got pneumonia while giving an extremely long inauguration speech in the rain. Anyway, this little town of Arab named themselves after a local farmer's son, Arad, with a D. When they filled out the paperwork at the post office, someone mixed up the D and the B and they never bothered to correct it. But back to modern day Arab. Fewer US cities are shedding jobs faster than the North northern Alabama city of Arab. In the last five years, the number of people working in the city declined by 9.8%. Even as unemployment across the U.S. has gone down, they're going the wrong direction. Crime is also a problem in Arab. There were 6,217 property crimes last year alone, which included burglary, larceny, and motor vehicle theft. They got a lot of crime in Arab. <laughs> Number five, Detroit, Michigan. Anyone in the US that hasn't been in a medically induced coma since the late 70s knows things haven't gone great for Detroit for some time now. Once an amazing example of what Americans can accomplish, today it's just a shell of what it once was. At one point, the city of Detroit had just under 2 million residents. Today, it's estimated they have less than 600,000. We'll know for sure at the completion of the 2020 census. Yes, the census. It's a department for the US government that counts people, basically. It's not a dog whistle for all the conspiracy theorists to start saying how evil the census is. Let it go. Stop typing. Detroit is by far the largest city to rank among the worst places to live. Now, the Motor City's manufacturing sector has staged a bit of a comeback in recent years. It's got a long way to go before it gets anywhere near what it once was. Unemployment in Detroit remains high. The census estimates that an average of 10.6% of the city's labor force has been unemployed at least once over the last five years. Not good. Their crime is high. They have abandoned homes. People are still flooding out of the place. Place. It's it's kind of depressing, but they've gotten a little better. <laughs> Number four, Corcoran, California. A lot of people living in Corcoran don't want to be there. That's because they're inmates at California State Prison, Corcoran. This was everyone's favorite nut job cult leader, Charlie Manson's final home. Corcoran, California ranks among the worst cities to live in, largely because of the local economy. The city's 36% poverty rate is among the highest in the state and more than double the national poverty rate. For those in the city that do have some money, there's nothing to spend those entertainment dollars on. The number of bars, restaurants, and theaters, museums, and recreation centers per person are far lower in Cochrane than typical nationwide. Basically, they've got nothing to do there. You drive around the prison and make noise and entertain the inmates, I guess. I don't know. If you do want some entertainment, you're probably gonna have to drive to Bakersfield about an hour away. Once you get there, you'll probably turn right back around because Bakersfield is pretty dull too. Like many of the cities on this list, Corcoran's population is shrinking. The number of people living in the city fell by 7.3% over the last five years. At the 2010 census, they said they had about 22,000 residents. They're thinking it's going to get below 20,000 in the next census. Sucks to live in Corcoran. <laughs> Number three, Flint, Michigan. If you're thinking about moving to Flint, Michigan, this should be viewed as a cry for help to your loved ones. There is nothing good going on in Flint, nor will there be. There's no jobs, no future, no hope, no clean water. The only thing they do have a lot of is poverty. They got plenty to go around. They got enough for like 10 other cities. The poverty level in Flint is 177% higher than the national average. Flint is one of the poorest and most dangerous cities in the United States. About half of the households in Flint earn less than $26,000 a year. Flint has made national news in recent years after it was discovered that the city's water supply was contaminated with lead. Very high levels. The contamination crisis has driven people out of the city and depressed the real estate to where it's like worthless. It's bad. I would just like to say to all of you, if you drink the water in Flint, you're going to die early. The median home value is about $28,000, so you don't need a 30-year mortgage if you want to buy a house in Flint. The overall crime rate is 79% higher than the national average in Flint, and the water is poisonous. So if you did get a 30-year loan, you'd probably never live long enough to pay it off, so that's kind of sad. <laughs> Number two, Benton Harbor, Michigan. It's got a population of 10,000 people currently. Benton Harbor is a small city in western Michigan. The overall crime rate in Benton Harbor is 124% higher than the national average. It ranks as one of the most dangerous cities in the state and one of the most dangerous cities in the country. Having the feeling that every day you may be killed in the city that you live can drive current residents away and make the city less appealing to potential residents. Now, in most circles, just that stat alone, common sense would tell you you should move. I guess some 
some people didn't receive any common sense because they had 33 new residents in 2018. The really bad news for Benton Harbor is they also lost 175 residents. Since they were leaving, I'm assuming they had some really good common sense. In the last five years, Benton Harbor's population declined by 1.7%, even though the U.S. population grew by 3.8%. They have no jobs here. There's no hope. Winters are brutal. And the median home price is about $56,000. That's the only good news. I mean, if you want to call it good news, it's cheap. But why is it cheap? The neighborhoods suck. Usually that's the answer. And it's dangerous. And number one. East St. Louis, Illinois. East St. Louis, Illinois only has 26,000 residents and they are doing some damage. East St. Louis is the most dangerous city in the most dangerous metro area in the United States. If you're not sure how dangerous that is, think Jurassic Park after things went bad, but then add firearms and drugs. Across the border in the St. Louis metro area, there were 2,100 violent crimes for every 100,000 residents in 2018. That's more than five times the national violent crime rate of 383 incidents per every 100,000 residents. Any East St. Louis, they're going for the record. There were 2,752 violent crimes for every 100,000 residents in 2018. That is more than seven times the national rate. Who's running this place? Like the ghost of Charles Manson or something like that? High crime areas are often poor and many in East St. Louis face serious financial hardships. They're dirt poor here. It's horrible. Unsafe streets and widespread poverty are driving some out of the city. They're not driving some out of the city. They're busing some of these people out of the city. That's how fast they're leaving. Cars don't cut it anymore. There's filling up with buses and leaving. The good news is, though, you could get a house for $55,000 in East St. Louis. You're in a major city and you're getting a house in the city for $55,000. I mean, if you survive, it's a good deal. All right, so that is 10 more towns you shouldn't move to in 2020. These were in no particular order. These are places you should stay away from in 2020. I might do a third one. If there's any places you think should be on that list, let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to buy a t-shirt. Join the membership thing on this channel. Leave me a comment. Give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you already haven't. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.